Coach Derek Ansley, our offensive and defensive coordinator here with us today. Uh, we're excited about hearing from him. Uh, welcome, coaches. Uh, um, I don't know who's going to go first. You guys go. We're, we're just uh, thrilled to be here with you. Go ahead, D.A. You can lead us off. I appreciate y'all having us on today. You know, we're just in the middle of getting ready for week one. So we're excited to visit with you guys today. Big week, big week. Derek, tell us, uh, 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 Derek, tell us about what you, uh, uh, what you have um, seen in, uh, in uh, looking at South Carolina and what do you expect offensively from them and talk about the quarterback change. Well, the first thing that sticks out is the offensive coordinator. You know, Mike Bobo, he's an SEC veteran, you know, played quarterback at Georgia. Offensive coordinator, a long time at Georgia. He, he's seen a lot of things. Um, you know, we've competed against him a lot of times at different locations, different spots. So we're, we're excited to get a chance to, you know, to compete against him. The quarterback change uh, makes a lot of sense for me um, because the guy, Colin Hill, you know, was with Mike at Colorado State for three years. Um, veteran guy, big time arm, smart. Um, is going to get them in and out of the right plays. Um, we got to do a really good job of disguising, uh, mixing coverages, mixing the gaps um, to kind of throw him off because he's seen a lot and his offensive coordinator is another seasoned guy that's seen a lot. Uh, uh, Coach, uh, uh, if you would go through your position groups, to starting with the defensive line and tell us kind of what, what you've seen in camp and what we should, uh, what we should expect because you've got a lot of quarterback club members out here that will – be in Columbia or, or uh, glued to the TV Saturday night? Yeah, we're well, good. good. We, we need all the support we can get there, uh, as many Vols um, fans we can get. But just starting with the defensive line, um, it's been a, a work by committee this this camp. Start with Latrell Bumpus. He's probably been the most consistent guy up front, has provided some leadership along with Matthew Butler um, in the interior. Uh, at the nose guard position, Elijah Simmons, um, you know, Mr. Garland, Quasi Garland, he's done a really nice job in there. And then there's some young guys that are, that are in the fold, you know, with, with Amari Thomas, you know, coming on. We're trying to get him ready to go, you know, from Memphis. Um, Jay Blakely is another guy that's, that's repping in there. And, and also Greg Emerson. So, you know, it's been good to get Aubrey Solomon back on the grass the last couple of days. Uh, he pr provides the stout girth that we need in the inside. He's a big man. And, you know, all those guys are working hard, you know. So we're, we're, we're excited about playing eight, nine guys um, next week. When you go to the outside linebacker committee, you know, obviously losing, you know, Daryl Taylor last year was was a big blow. And, um, you know, we're going to have to kind of be by committee at that position as well. You know, Kevon Bennett, DeAndre Johnson are two guys that are working very hard, um, trying to master their technique to add some edge rush. Roman Harrison being, being a young guy that we expect a lot of good things out of this year. And then two two incoming freshmen, you know, Tyler Barron and Morgan Joseph have shown flash that they, they can – and help us in some capacity and some roles uh, moving forward. On uh, the inside back of position, you know, our signal callers, you know, Henry Toy Toy leads that group, leads our defense. Um, very intelligent player, played a lot as a freshman last year. Uh, we're counting on him to provide that, that inside stability from the front to the back to keep us all glued together. Um, the money position is kind of still wide open. You know, we got two guys that we feel good about. Kaveris Crouch, who played outside backer and inside backer last year and also play some running back for Coach Chaney on, on goal line situation. So he's a talented player. I mean, he's, he's a run, chase, tackle guy, uh, a lot like Daniel Batuli, a, a bigger thumper type type body. And then you talk about Jeremy Banks, um, a guy that we, we've got back in here, and he's done a fine job of coming in here, learning, um, playing within the system, adding toughness to that position. Um, so we feel really good about those three guys. And, and, and Aaron Beasley, another young kid that's kind of moved around from safety to running back. You know, now he's found a home at inside backer. You know, he's adding some punch at that position. So, I feel like we got four guys that we could we could roll in there and, and, and play winning football there by Henry. Um, then you talk about the back end. A lot of, lot of play time experience for the guys in the back end. Um, starting with Delonte Taylor and Bryce Thompson. Those guys kind of man the corner, um, along with Kenneth George, who's another guy that played a significant role last year and will play a significant role this year um, with those three guys at the corner position. The safety position, Trayvon Flowers is, is going to move over to strong safety and try to fill the void that Nigel Warrior left last year. And then free safety uh, will be manned by, you know, either Theo Jackson, Warren Burrells taking some reps there, Jalen McCullough, um, Cheyenne LaBruza. So we're still trying to figure that spot out. But then our star position, um, Sean Schamberg returns at that spot. has done a nice job in camp. And there's a freshman, Danico Slaughter, um, who's also going to be able to get in there and play some of that nickel star position. So we're excited about him. 
Um, and the guy that I didn't mention, um, Keyshawn Lawrence from, from Nashville, has done a really good job of, you know, playing safety in camp, playing corner. You know, we moved him around. His athleticism shows a lot. So we got to find him a home and leave him. But he's, he's a guy that can play winning football as well. Coach, uh, what, is the, what do you see as the biggest difference uh, from right now as opposed to a year ago? And how much more encouraged are you about our defense? Well, I, I just think the, the communication, you know, this is year three, you know, in the, in the scheme. You know, this is my second year, but it's actually year three in the scheme of, of, of what Coach Pruitt wants to do. And, you know, I, I see guys a lot more comfortable. When guys go in motion, you can see guys anticipating what's going on, what's the, what's the next check. You see guys that, that are they're, they're bonding off the field. Um, so I see a more of a closeness togetherness with this group. Um, hopefully that carries on to the field. Questions from the audience? I see 50 hands up. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Coach, the, the, the question was about Keyshawn Lawrence. The uh, questioner was excited about what you said. Uh, does he have a chance to start for us this year? Well, you know, he, he's working. Uh, again, we moved him around in the secondary from safety to corner to corner safety. So, you know, it's, it's when you get one of those guys that are really talented, you know, you want to kind of move him around. I'm um, not saying he's like Eric Berry, but he's kind of, you know, got that kind of skill set as far as size, speed, ball skill. So, you're just trying to figure out what's the best place for him and also what's the best place for the team to be successful. So he's got just as good a chance to play um, this year as anybody. We, we've always played the best player. You know, the last three years we played three or four freshman defensive backs, and you know we'll continue to do that if he's the best player. I see one in the back. Who on our team right now stands out to you as the best edge rusher? Um. Well, probably the most productive guy, if you're just talking about edge, has probably been Kevon Bennett. You know, he, he's been a guy that's added some juice off the, off the edge. He's been at the edge a couple of times and affected the quarterback from four-man rushes. So, if you're just talking about most productive guy right now, it'll probably be Kevon Bennett, but DeAndre Johnson is right behind him. The question is, what position on our team has defensively has been uh, hit the most – loss of practice as a result of the virus? Oh, man, that's a, <laughs> that's a tricky question because this virus has been around since we've gotten back together in June. So, you know, there's been multiple guys that have missed time, you know, if you go all the way back to June. So, you know, one thing you got to do with the COVID situation is develop the back end of your roster because at some point you may be playing with everybody on your roster. So the whole 85 has got to be ready to go at some point. Mm -hmm. One more? Coach Angel? Yes, sir. The question is, uh, uh, Coach, about the progress of uh, Aubrey Solomon. Yeah, like, like I say, you know, he, he's been nicked up here and there. You know, missed a little bit of camp, but he's been out there the last, you know, 10 days or so, and, and he's been a, a breath of fresh air to get out there. You know, he's a big man that's athletic. Um, he can hold a point of attack. You know, he can push the pocket takes multiple men to, 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 to block him. So we like that when, when you know, two guys have to block one. That allows our, our linebackers that are, that are really good at running and chasing and filling holes to go make tackles. So he's done a really nice job the time he's been back out there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, Chansley, one more if we can. They, they, they like to ask you about the kicking game. Snapper feels that's really important. So tell us who, uh, how we're doing with that, because we're all interested in that. And the kicking game? Yes, sir. Well, I don't really specialize in kicking games, so I, I will let Coach, <laughs> Coach Chaney answer that question. Um, there you we go. Have enough, we, yeah, we, have enough, we have enough on our plate over there on, on defense trying to, trying to stop Mike Bobo and company this weekend. So. But, um, you know, Samaglis does a nice job in, in field goal. We try to block him a lot, and we never can get to him. So, he's doing a nice job. Coach, I don't know how well you can hear, but uh, we're getting ready to give you a great ovation. Thank you for being here. We look forward to talking to Coach Chaney. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all.
Am I up? Well, well, well Coach, he kind of okie doked you because uh, he's left you 40 minutes, so have at it. <laughs> well, I got a good minute or two here I can spare with y'all. No, heck, I, I tell you, it's been interesting, the whole, the whole scenario we found ourselves in this year, guys. It's, a, it's been a different climate, a different environment as you wait on regulations to come down to govern how you're going to coach the kids. And, you know, when we finally got the wind of what we're going to get to do on the 20 hour a week rule, we really never had a, a de facto camp. You know, it was all set up from a, like a game week from the beginning on. So the time restraints that you've had with your players, you know, you asked the DA was asked the question about the things that have hurt COVID and what player I just know systematically, it's been difficult to find enough time in the 20 hour week world to catch up all the rookies and all the freshmen with just overall philosophy and, and things to winning games, you know, just your little comments that you want to talk to them about how to win games, how to do this, how to do that. You just haven't had that, you know, that intimacy of uh, sitting around in a, in a room for two hours with them and talking and having conversations that's been void. So we've had to learn to survive in our world right now, the way we are to get that through with the 20 hour a week rule. I think the kids have adjusted well. They, you know, the typical stuff there, hell, they adjust a lot quicker than we do, you know. So they just roll with the punches. The idea of trying to make sure they're disciplined and how they're handling the COVID with the, with the face mask and what they're doing when they leave this building has always been a tough, troubling time with young men. But we've, we've worked that through, and I think the kids are grasping a hold of that and doing a really good job with that. As far as the offense goes, I think the boys are working hard. Just like DA said, you've had kids miss. One day, this guy's out. Next day, this guys are out for two weeks. And, and what it's forced you to do, you know, we're not unique. And don't misconstrue what I'm saying as a complaint. This is the world we're living in right now. And I su suggest to you that everybody in our league is. So the, the proper way to get depth and quality talent playing at all positions with depth, you're going to be playing with some guys sometime throughout the season that routinely might not be playing just because of the, the environment we find ourselves in. So quality depth across the board and trying to get equal reps has been tough because you sometimes you'll find you'll have a full gamut of offensive line and you might have five wide receivers. All of a sudden, you better emphasize the run game that day. I think Coach Pruitt's done a great job of managing what we can get done on the practice field to continue to work through it. And as we've done that, we find ourselves sitting right here at the beginning of game week. So I think if there's going to be any normalcy in our lives that we've found so far, we'll probably be starting today as we work into game week in our first week as we work through it, to, to work in our regular schedule as we work to it. But I think the kids' resiliency has been the, uh, amazing to me, how it hasn't affected them a lot. Early on, you have a lot of questions, a lot of skepticism, it seemed to me like, from players. But I think they bit in and they said, heck, let's go play ball. And I, thought, I feel like that's where we're at right now as a football team, as an offense for sure. I think the boys are ready to go. And talking by position now, the offensive line, I think Will's done a great job with these kids, keeping them fighting through it. We've got a lot more depth than we routinely have. So that's a good deal for us. And, uh, I mean, you've got Kate, you know, all the Mays boys are here. Darnell's here. Carvin's here. Well, the, the two young ones with Cooper Mays, I think he's done a great job with Spraggins. Brandon Kennedy's done a great job. Trey Smith, you got Kingston Harris, Karon Calvert, Jameer Johnson, Wanya Morris. You got names, you got bodies, big body kids that are practicing hard up front. And the beautiful part about it from year one to year two, they actually know the play when we call it. So that helps a lot uh, <laughs> through execution. When they know what the hell they're doing, it always helps. The tight end spot, we're a little thin there. And uh, Austin Post battled some injuries throughout camp and so on. But Fant and Jacob Warren's done a good job coming in and, and competing hard. The young kids, Sean Brown's done a good job. And Jordan Allen's moved over and helped us there also at that spot. So it's kind of been a revolving door a little bit at that Y spot. I call it the Y position, trying to move around and try. I like to play with two tight ends on the field a lot. So trying to get those guys caught up to speed with the schemes that we're trying to do has been fun. Uh, the wide receiver spot, always interesting. Yes, they lost, you know, losing the two we lost last year. With Cedric Tillman's done a good job and battled through camp. He had a hamstring early in June, but he's came back and he's doing fine. You know, Josh Palmer's doing good. Brandon Johnson's had a wonderful, what we would call camp right now. I think he's done a great job in that thing. Ramel Keaton's played good. But all of them from time to time has missed. So if you really equate it to going into the first game, we probably have had about 15 functional practices where wow. routinely I think the NCAA has allowed us about 29 or something. 
And then you add the addition of the new guys, the Bayless Jones, the transfer in from Southern Cal. He flashes a lot of good speed and power. He's learning within our system, but I think he'll be a bonus for us and help us. And you got the freshman kids, the Malachi Weidman from down in Florida, big, tall, rangy kid. We really like him. He's learning. He's learning everything. The discipline of learning all that spot out there, but he's a six, four or five kid and go get the ball. We're really, really happy with him. I think he's done a great job. Jimmy Holiday has moved out and playing some wide receiver and some quarterback for us right now. He can fly. I really like what we see with Jimmy. Pretty disciplined kid, a 200-pounder, learning how to play that position, and which is fun, but he can fly. Then you add Jalen Hyatt and Jimmy Callaway, two other fast, fast players in there that have done a really good job. Both of them having – Jalen Hyatt's going to battle through and get through most of it. Jimmy's battled some injuries as he's worked through it. So the young kids are the ones that – a little bit behind just because we haven't had that time with them but as far as talent we're really pleased with what they have they put a lot on the field they can fly and catch the ball we're excited about those guys as we move on to it. the running back spot you're going you know you're going to see ty and eric out there all the time if they're off the field uh, i either had a heart attack or something's happened i don't know but <laughs> at the end of the day they're going to be on the field playing a lot uh, i really like the two new kids we brought in with t hodge and jabari small I think those guys are going to be good football players here for us. I, I really like them, and they're doing a really good job learning the system. And Jay, Jay's doing a great job. Jay Graham getting those guys. It's St. and Joe and everybody. The staff has done a, a wonderful job, as we said here today, just trying to get everybody headed in the right direction. But the running backs, that's about what it is as we work through it. We've got some injuries in there with some other kids as we keep going through it. But we're excited about what we have. It's just – trying to keep that depth going because who knows what's going to happen. Somebody's going to play that you weren't expecting to play. That's just the reality of where we're at. And the quarterback spot, I'm sure y'all don't want to talk much about it. So I'll open it up for any <laughs> questions right now and we'll keep going from there. No, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I, I like what they're doing. Jarrett's had a solid camp for us. He's done a good job. He understands what we're doing. He understands what we're trying to do. And he's excited about playing JT and Brian Maurer, they're battling still in that spot for who's going to be the backup player right now. And even JG, sometimes JG ain't hot. We don't have any problem. You understand that? You've watched us. Heck, we'll put somebody else in there to try to spur the offense. It doesn't matter. All three of those kids are capable of playing winning football, and we've got to make sure we put them in positions to be successful. So those guys are doing that. And you ask, if they ask DA the question about it, how did the, the COVID hurt anybody? And I would argue that with Harris and Bailey, really like a lot of the things he does, but not having the big practices and the split fields and getting a lot of the reps, I think it's probably harmed the quarterback position throughout college football more than any other spot. I think that's probably it. And he's battling, doing a good job. I really like Harrison. He's going to be a solid player for us. With that, that tells you a little bit what I think. I'd be interested in any questions you guys might have or some great ideas to be able to go there and beat these boys. <laughs> I'll listen to anything. <laughs> Hey, Co Coach, you mentioned something early on about uh, spending time with kids and, and, and teaching them how to win or telling them things about how to win. Give us an example in your quarterback room, what you would say to your quarterbacks about how to win. Well, the classic example is throwing the ball in the low red area. You know, the, the field gets so restricted down there, you've got to make quick decisions on where you're going with it. The windows are small, and throwing it out of the back of the end zone is a good, good choice. So just talking to those scenarios through of what you got to do. A running back trying to score on first and 10 on the two-yard line, reaching the ball across the goal line. We don't want to do that. You know, they might have done that in high school. Just those winning edge things that we talk about, every position has them. From receivers catching a go ball and the DB falls down, they start prancing before they get in the end zone. Well, they'll wash that touchdown off right now. So all those little things that, that – go unnoticed but there's a list of 150 things you got to touch on these kids with but these conversations with video takes time to be able to show them so they can understand it and then go out and replicate it on the football field without the the use of the big practices and the large amount of reps that we routinely have had so we've had to readjust on how we train these kids a little bit we got some questions uh they'll have to ask me and i'll ask you what do you got that's fine yeah Yes, sir. After having to routine change on the out-of-town game versus what it used to be. How's the routine changed uh, on the out-of-town games versus what it was last year, if any? Well, to my, to my knowledge, this will be our first one. I, I assume that, that we'll lift off and we'll land and we'll go to a hotel and everything will be good from that point on. I, I assume that there, there's going to be social distancing wherever we go. So 
the hotel part of the, the meetings and things, I'm sure will be a little different than what we're accustomed to. Um, probably the locker room setup. I know the sidelines have already changed where they've given us more room on the sidelines down to the 15 yard line. And you won't see us in those giant clusters on the sideline the way I liked it. I'd always try to get the offense together and Will would talk to them through me. And I mean, I'd talk to them through Will on the sideline. I don't think you'll see that as much. You'll see more little smaller pods with a little more distance between them. Uh, as far as the travel part of it, you know, I'll, I'll have to find a pair of britches to wear and it'd be about the biggest thing. This is a veteran team, uh, our questioner says. How has the leadership stepped up in this veteran, with this veteran well, team? I think I, that's a good question. It's always interesting for me. And I, I think all coaches fall victim to saying, boy, we just don't have the leadership we had 30 years ago or whatever. I don't know if that's true. This year, you've put a lot of questions in these young men's minds. There's been a lot, of, a lot of unrest in our world right now. But I feel like in the last week, just speaking from my side, because I'm kind of like DA, I try to farm my own field and I worry about my own guys. I feel like the Trey Smiths and the Brandon Kennedys and the Garantanos and the Josh Palmers and the Brandon Johnsons and the Ty Chandlers and Eric Grays, that you're seeing more out of them on the practice field. They're demanding more of themselves. They're pushing the younger players even harder. So I see that building as we keep going through. They know what a game's going to be like. They know the 60 minutes of that game. What's changed is the preparation and how they've got to be. Uh, you think about the discipline it takes now to prepare with these kids with all the stuff going on around them. It, it's been a task. Yeah, but I think the more mature kids, are, they're handling it pretty good. And some of the young kids are, are grasping it as we get going here. Coach, you'll, you'll have to stop us whenever you're ready to stop because we got a lot. All of right, guys, I appreciate everything. Go ahead. Hey, wait. Can you take one more? <laughs> I'm joking. Give me a couple more. I'm good. Two more and we'll stop then. Thank you. Yes, sir. How has JT Shrout improved over last year? I think he's seeing the field better than he did last year. I really believe that. He has more of command over the offense. I think he's playing with a lot more confidence. And confidence is everything. You know, is if you ask me one thing as we approach this ball game that, that you got to get instilled in these kids is a complete confidence and a lockdown mentality that everything now has got to go. It's got to go. You know, you can't be having any of the, the ifs or the quarrels or any of that stuff going on right now. You've got to lock in right now. And I feel like JT's got a good swag about him. He's feeling confident. And there's certain things I like JT when he's out there playing that I'll call for him because I think he can do it real good. So that, that's kind of where it is. But I think his development is just familiarity. And I'll say it over and over again. It's familiarity, familiarity, familiarity. They understand what a play is. And I don't make light of that, but they really do. Now they're learning the nuances of it. Mm -hmm. One more. Yes, sir. The question is, is how have you been able to coach Garantano into making his decisions quicker? Repetition and knowledge. There's nothing. Knowledge is everything. If you can be disciplined at quarterback and see what you need to see when the ball is snapped, and then the knowledge takes over from that point on. I think JG's done a good job. And JG's a real professional when it comes to work. He'll come in, he'll work a lot of hours, and he'll put the time in it takes. The discipline when you're behind the center and after you say set hut of seeing what you need to see is what quarterbacks have always struggled with. What coverage are you seeing? Do you have the discipline to have your eyes where the play starts? There's always a start and a progression on every play. And they get in trouble when they forget where the thing starts at. And I think that you're seeing a lot more consistency with JG as far as the consistency of starting to play correctly. And after that, he has the knowledge. It's just making sure we start everything correctly. So I think just his discipline with his eyes, I think we're going to see a little bit quicker decisions out of him. Hey, Coach, there's a, le there's a young lady in here that uh, had a wonderful question. And that is when you look at the New Orleans Saints, did he sign on for a team? Okay. When you look at the Saints on the sidelines, the smallest guy just about is Drew Brees, and he's about the skinniest guy. But he's such a great player. What makes him such a great player? Competitive spirit, talent, 
that I mean, if you play Drew and, and checkers, you try to beat your brains in. It wouldn't matter what it is. He's not going to lose at whatever he wants to do. And he ties his desire to be successful in with an incredible work ethic. Just look around the room here. Uh, I, I'd argue that everyone in your room that's been successful at whatever endeavor they are had a certain amount of talent and passion for it and worked their tails ends off at it. This is not unique. Football is not special. It's just part of life. You work hard and have a little talent at something, you're usually going to have some success. Now take that to a high level with Drew Brees. He is probably the most competitive I've ever been around and one of the most talented. So that makes you special. Listen guys, for a second. You. There's a great applause for you. I, I hope to see everybody over there. Go Vols.